Hello everybody and welcome to this very first tutorial on making music with Sunvox. And in this very first tutorial I will show you uh, where to download Sunvox from. And I will show you the basic interface and we will start making our very first song. So let's go ahead and download Sunvox and to do that you point your browser to warmplace.ru or warmplace.ru and then in the top menu here you can click on Sunvox and that will bring you to this page and right here at the top are the download links and I'm assuming you are either on Windows, Mac or Linux or any of these and then you can just go ahead, click this link and that will give you a zip file. Sunvox of course is also available on the mobile devices like iOS or Android. Um, while Sunvox is free for the Windows and Mac and Linux versions, the iOS and Android are not free. But they are still pretty cheap and um, if you ask me it's well worth the money. Anyway, I will download just a regular desktop version here. And uh, if I click this link, I get version 1.7.5, which is at this moment the latest release. However, Sunfox is under a very uh, active development, so it's uh, very likely that by the time you see this, um, we are already on a newer version. But uh, most of the features in uh, the program will still be exactly the same. Okay, so here we are. I've downloaded the zip file. So let's uh, go ahead and unzip that. And you will get this folder. And uh, in there you see the documentation, some example songs, instruments. But for now we're interested in this Sunvox folder in here. And as you can see under there, you have different directories for uh, different operating systems. If you are on Windows, you will want to copy these files in here to your program files folder. I am on the Mac OS X, so I will use this version right here, but it doesn't really matter. And of course, if you are on Linux or any of the other devices listed here, just uh, select the Sunfox version that uh, will work on your computer. So uh, once you've installed that and you uh, start up Sunfox, you should see something like this. And uh, Sunfox will probably ask you some basic preferences on your first startup, but once you get through that, you uh, should see something like this. And um, well, I can go and explain what all of this is, but we'll get to all of that later in a bit more detail. For now, we are just concerned with getting some sound out of this thing. After all, we want to make music, so we need to hear the sound. Now, the easiest way to do this, if you uh, look over here, you can obviously see like the piano keys. So you can just Go with your mouse pointer over any of these keys and click. And you should hear uh, some sounds. Now it's not really a... It's not really a very good way to uh, try and play a song with just your mouse. So is there any other way we can get some sound out of this? Well, yes, you can use... Uh, if you have it, a MIDI keyboard, if you have connected it up to your computer correctly, but you can also use your computer keyboard. And that may sound a bit strange. Uh, how do you use computer keyboards, which uh, doesn't look anything like a piano keyboard? Uh, well, let me explain. Uh, so your uh, computer keyboard looks probably a bit like this, maybe slightly different, uh, depending on where you are in the world. I modeled this one after my own keyboard. Uh, yours might be different, but uh, the basic idea is the same. And uh, your music keyboard, your piano keyboard, will look like this. So how uh, do these piano keys translate to the computer keyboards? Well, we start off with the C on the piano. And that key can be played with a Z key. 
on your computer keyboards. Uh, the D on the piano keyboard can be placed with an X, the E is played with the C, the V plays the F, and so on, and you can see how that works. Now you'll notice that there are black keys in between these uh, keys, of course, like the C sharp, which uh, is played with the S key, the D sharp is played with the D key, and you might see a pattern here. So that is how the first octave is played. Then the second octave starts again with the C, and uh, you may wonder, well, um, there isn't um, that much space anymore left on the bottom two rows, but you can still play this C with the comma key, However, you can also play it with the Q key on your keyboard. And similarly, the D is played with the period key as well as with the W key. And then the E is played with the forward slash and the E key. And from there, the F simply is played with the R again and the G is played with the T and so on. And you can see how all the other keys fit in uh, just like that. Very simple. So it's uh, not that hard, but uh, it might take a little bit of practice. So I would suggest you go and uh, try that out now. You start up Sunvox and just try to play something with your computer keyboard. So remember starting with the Z key to play the C. And then from there on. So you can play about two and a half octaves this way. Well, that's uh, very nice, but uh, you may notice that you can only start at the C3 and the highest you play is uh, G5. That is a nice range, but you will probably want to get a bit lower than that and you might also want to get a bit higher than that. So how can you play lower than C3, for example? Well, if you look over here on the right side, there are these two buttons, octave minus and octave plus. And you can simply click on these until uh, lowest is C0. Once you've done that, now the Z key on my keyboard plays C0, which is barely audible. And the highest key I can play is G2. Of course, if I want to get higher than that again, I press on the octave plus key. And then C9 is the highest I can get, but that doesn't really make much sense for me because I can only play one octave. So I'll probably go as far as C7. And then you are really in the highest possible domain. And well, this works. Uh, works pretty well, but there is a slightly easier way and that is to use the function keys on your keyboard. So right now the lowest octave here is C1 and I can change that if I just press the F1 key. Now the lowest octave is C0. If I press F2, the lowest octave is C1, F3 is C2, and of course you can imagine if I press, say for example, F6, that the lowest octave is C5. So you can see I can quickly switch uh, these octaves with my function keys. Well, okay, so that is um, pretty uh, simple. And uh, if you've played around with it a bit, you got a bit of a feel for how it works. It's about time we start making our first song with some fox. 
but you may be thinking, well, this uh, this sound that we've been playing with, it doesn't really sound like a very good instrument. And, uh, well, I think you're right. And that's because what we've got here is we are playing this generator module. And that is just a very basic sound. You can see right here, this is what it would look like in an audio editor. And then even that sound goes through an echo module, so that's why you keep hearing it uh, a few times. And that doesn't really sound good. Well, you can try and just play with all these settings here and... You do get some different sounds out of this, but none of them really sounds very good, like uh, a single instrument that you could use. So how do we get better sounding instruments? Well, the easiest way is to just load in uh, an instrument that comes with Sunfox. So you've downloaded the zip file, you've unzipped it and you've taken out your executable file, which you're running right now. But in that same folder where you found Sunfox are, was also a folder named Instruments. And we're going to take a look at that right now. And there are a couple of ways to do that. But first of all, I just want to get rid of these default modules in here. So what I've got here, the generator, I've got it selected, which you can tell by the little squares that are around it. And I can just right click anywhere and choose delete module. So folks will ask me if I really want to delete the generator and I say yes, and it's gone. And I don't really need this echo right now either, so I click on it to select it. Of course I can right click and click delete module again, but there are a couple of other ways to do this. I can, on the right hand side here, where there is this little button, you can click on that. And that will bring up the same menu where I can click on delete module. But I can also just press the backspace key on my keyboard. And then instead of clicking yes, I can also just press enter. And that might just be the easiest way to get rid of an unwanted module in here. Now note that the output module you can never delete. Uh, it will always be there and you will always need it, so there's no reason to delete it. Now to get some new modules in here. Uh, one way to do that is again click on this button on the right. You can click on new module or load module. And of course you can also just right click anywhere in this area and click on new or load module. So click on load. And then I open up the Sunfox folder we downloaded earlier. And here you can see the instruments. So you just click on that to open it. And for our first module, what sort of instrument do I want to import into Sunfox? Well, you can really choose anything you like, but I find an easy way to get started with a song is to start with a bass. So click on bass and it should open the folder and you should see these files in here. You will want to know which one to choose. So well, you can just click on any of them and then you can use either the piano roll at the top here or again you can just use your computer keyboard to play this uh, sample. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but uh, it's important to note that uh, all these that end in .sunsynth are actually generated on the fly uh, module. So Sunfox will generate uh, whatever node you're playing. And these uh, files that end on XI are actually sampled uh, sounds. 
Uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference uh, for us right now. So you can choose whichever you want. I just go with the first analog base in the list and I will add that by clicking on OK. And there we have our module. Uh, but uh, now if you would try to uh, play this module, you can see the waveform updating in here, but you don't hear anything. And that is because this module is not connected to the output. So how do we connect these two? Well, one thing you can do is uh, on the right here is the link button. You click on that. You click on the module you want to link. You click on link again, and then you click on the module that you want this one to link to. And there you have it. Now the base module is connected to the output. Note that the first half of this line is a bit brighter and the second half is a bit duller. And you can also see little white dots traveling from one side to the other. And that signifies that the sound signal that's generated in here travels in this direction to the output. If you would turn this around and if you would link the output to the base, you can see now this line is pointing the other direction and you do not hear the base because there's no way this sound can travel from this module. It can't go this way. So keep that in mind that you always want to link the two modules in the correct configuration. So from here to here. Another way to link two modules together and I think an easier way is to just uh, hover my mouse over this module here, hold down the shift button on my keyboard, click and drag from one module to the other and that will also link up these two together in the way I want them to. Now note that uh, on the left here uh, is uh, this little window with these uh, settings in here. These are the parameters for this module. And if you look at these volume, it's pretty straightforward, but what all this is, uh, well, we won't touch these because this is a little bit of an advanced module. And depending if you have chosen a different sample to begin with, this might be completely different. So we won't touch any of this. Uh, you can play with the volume if you want, which will make uh, this uh, which will make this sound uh, louder or a bit softer, depending on which way you drag the slider. But really, don't really need to mess with any of this right now. But do note that if you should change anything here and you completely mess up this module, you don't hear anything anymore, uh, don't worry because uh, this module right here, even though we imported it from uh, our folder, our instruments folder, whatever you change in here only changes in this song that you've uh, got right here. Well, it's not much of a song because we don't have anything yet, but only in this Sunvox file. Uh, the original instrument uh, stays the same, so I can change all of these things and uh, now we uh, don't hear anything anymore. This uh, bass doesn't work anymore. No problem, I can just load it back in. And then we have it and it works again and you can see that everything I changed here is back to normal here. So anyway, we don't change anything, we just leave this base as it is and we are ready to start writing our song. So how do we do that? Well, uh, this is how Sunfox works. Down here you can see a big empty area and uh, right here it says timeline. And uh, here at the start, that's where the song will start. And you can see this tiny white rectangle. And this is the first pattern uh, that Sunfox will play. 
And you can see by, because it's flashing and because it has these uh, rectangles around it, this is the active pattern. And this pattern is what we see here. So right now you can see it's completely empty. So how do I get some notes in here that I play with an uh, analog bass? I mean, I can play something on my uh, computer keyboard, but I don't see anything change in the pattern. Uh, well, that's because I'm not in edit mode. And to get in edit mode, all I need to do is press the space bar. And you can see right at the top here, a couple of extra buttons appear. And just because these buttons are here, that's how we know we are in edit mode. And now if I press any key on my uh, keyboard, you can see it adds it into the pattern. So if I press space again to get out of edit mode, and I play something, it uh, doesn't appear anymore. But that gives me a chance to uh, try out, like, what do I want Sunfox to play? And I'll just make a very simple pattern here. I entered the E, but I think I'll be going to uh, the scale of C major, because that is a very simple scale to begin with. And I think to start writing a song, it's a little bit important that you know a little bit of music theory. And for that, I uh, would like to point you to this website, musictheory.net. And uh, right there, you can just click on lessons and start with the basics. And that will explain from the ground up exactly how music theory works. And it goes all the way up to various uh, more advanced topics and eventually you get a lot of uh, very advanced things. Uh, it's not necessary to, to completely know everything in here. To be honest, I am fairly advanced myself in the music, but I don't know all of these pro uh, chord progressions, uh, which is what you see here. Um, but I get by just fine, so you don't really need to know everything in here. But you do need to know the basics. So uh, have a look at it, musictheory.net. So anyway, as I said, I would like to start writing this song in the scale of C major. So I will just start with uh, playing... Uh, C on this uh, bass module and something uh, like that sounds like a pretty good thing to start with so I press space to go into edit mode I make sure the cursor is at the start here and I start typing away now you might be thinking why is this just making one whole list here and uh, if I would play this back right now which I can do with uh, any of these play buttons at uh, right here that doesn't sound anything like what I just played and that is because Sunfox uh, at least in just basic edit mode doesn't care about uh, what tempo I play it in it just cares about what position the cursor is at and then adds uh, the note on that position. So if I want to get a rhythm in here, I just select all this and then I press shift delete to get rid of this all. I will need to make this rhythm myself. So here's what I'll do. I just press the uh, first note. And I press the down arrow key to move down uh, a few steps. You can choose whatever you want. I'll do two steps. And then press the C again. And immediately after, press the next uh, key. And 
And now if I will play this back, you can hear we have a rhythm that I want. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. And uh, let's have a look at uh, what we really made here now. Uh, if you look here, you can see that the first uh, line here in this pattern and this uh, 16th line, or actually it's the 17th because we start at zero. These are lighter colored and in between you also have slightly lighter colored lines. And this one is a uh, different color because it is the uh, current line. It's where I stopped it when I was playing. So we can ignore that one, but these colored lines uh, signify that this is the first beat of the measure. This is the second, the third and the fourth beat of the measure. So here we have two measures of, uh, of the song, two bars. And in here I've got a bit of a weird uh, rhythm going on. Uh, you can make something a bit uh, easier if you want, something just like a... Something like that, and that will just uh, play a pr uh, fairly standard rhythm. I've chosen to give it a little bit of variation here, and uh, give it a bit more of a swing feel, which you can hear. So if these are two measures, you, you can count uh, the beats uh, very simple, like so, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's what we've got, and it sounds pretty good. So now how do we uh, expand on this song? Well, there's a few things I can do. I can add uh, drums, because we've done bass, so that's basically part of the rhythm section. So we could add drums, uh, we could start uh, adding a melody line as well. It doesn't really matter what uh, you do now, so I'll just go and uh, add a new instrument. Now remember I right clicked in this uh, module editor and then selected load. That works very well, but there is a bit of an easier way and that's just to double click anywhere in this uh, area. And then down at the bottom here, click on load. So let's see what have we got. Let's add in maybe a keyboard sample. I think I like this piano 14, so I'll just add that one in. And then I've got it selected, and of course I need to connect it to the output. So with uh, shift pressed on my keyboard, I click and drag this one to the output. And now I can hear it, and I've got this added into my song. So if I change any of these parameters, the original file of this piano sound is unaltered. So let's see what we can do with this uh, piano in the scale of C major. Let's see what uh, that sounds like. Uh, well, not too bad. It's not the best thing I've ever come up with, but it, it'll do. Uh, I do think it can be a little bit louder, so I'll just increase the volume a bit. And I'll 
just decrease the volume on that bass as well. And that works pretty well. But so far we've only got this, these two measures looping over and over again and well, I really uh, just want to get some variation in. I want to do something else with this melody and just keep playing the same thing over and over. So how do we do that? Well, we add in a new pattern. And the way we do that here is uh, go to the timeline editor down here. Right click and click on new pattern. And you notice it will place it exactly on top of the previous pattern. So what we do is just click and drag it out and line it up exactly here. So these two patterns are now back to back. Now if I play back the song um, with this first play button here, which will play the entire song from the beginning. We now hear that uh, Sun Fox will play the first pattern and then the second pattern, which is still completely empty, so it will play nothing in here. Now, of course, we could go on and we want to keep this same bass uh, line in here, so we could type it in or we could select it here. Right click and copy and then go to the second pattern, put the cursor at the top, right click and paste. And that will, of course, work. But uh, it doesn't really make sense to just always put the same bass line in every pattern. There is a much easier way. And that is, if I just delete this pattern again, I can uh, right click on this pattern in here and click on clone pattern. And what that will do, as you can see, it adds a line here from the first to the second pattern. And uh, you can also see that the coloring is a bit duller on the second pattern. That just means that this is the pattern and this is the same pattern played again. However, I, if I do this, it will just play this bass line twice again, but it will also play this melody. And I don't want that. I want the melody to be something entirely different on the second uh, pattern. So the way we do this, and this is where the real power of uh, Sunfox is. I just select this and I copy it so I don't have to uh, type it all in again. And then I delete it. What I do is right here I click on new pattern again. And you notice it will place the pattern over the first one. I'll just click and drag it, but this time I drag it up instead of to the right. And what that will do is, it will place that pattern and if I play the song, it will play these two at the same time. So now I can go in here, right click and paste, paste the melody back in. And if I click on play, you hear some folks plays the bass and the piano. And then in the second pattern, it just plays the bass line because there's no next pattern for the melody. So let's add in uh, a new pattern. And this time I just uh, double click in here to immediately create a new pattern and then drag it to the position I want it. And uh, select the piano again. And in edit mode, I can now add the second uh, pattern, the continuation of this melody. If I can think of any uh, good continuations.
And now this song sounds like this. I'm not really happy with this last note here, so what I can do is just put the cursor on it, go into edit mode and press any other key. So that is a uh, basic start of the song and I think this will work well if I just select all these, select the first one and then hold shift and select all the other patterns and then I can right click and click on clone pattern again but I can also hit ctrl D and that will duplicate or clone whatever I had selected right at the end of the same selection. So now we'll play uh, the melody twice. I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to play this to know what it sounds like because I already know. So I can just go ahead and uh, add in a few more measures, and I will keep this bass line. So I will just select the last one here and press Ctrl D a, a number of times, and I double click here to add a blank pattern for the next uh, melody. So now if I just want to uh, listen to the newly added patterns, I just place this uh, playhead somewhere uh, just before those patterns and I click on this second play button, which will play the song from the current location, so from here. Well, that's not the greatest thing ever, so I'm not really happy with that. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just uh, get rid of a few of these notes in here, because they seem to never end. And uh, listen to this. Let's try uh, duplicating these last two patterns as well. Well, that's... Uh, Let's call that good enough for now. Of course, if you are uh, making your own song, you might want to spend a little bit more time on that and uh, make it uh, really a beautiful melody. So now what you can do is start adding a drum pattern on here. So I'll just double click in the timeline. I got a new pattern and then I'll double click in here, click on load 
and navigate to the drums folder in here. Here we've got BD, which stands for bass drum. We've got hi hats, and uh, SD is snare drum, and there are a few other things that you can choose from. Uh, for now, we are interested in a bass drum and a snare drum, so let's uh, just listen to a few of these. Now, also note that these sort of samples, which only play at one pitch, um, you only have one sound of bass drum in this. Uh, they typically play at uh, C5, that is the bass frequency. So if you want to listen to this, just try using C5. You'd play with another another key. Let's try that on a snare drum, it's a bit easier to hear. That sounds pretty good, but if I play it on C4, while it could still be usable, it doesn't really match a proper snare drum anymore. So uh, be aware that uh, these samples are usually played on C5. I think I'll go with bass drum 12 here. Connect that to the output. And uh, start uh, adding this in this pattern. And that, of course, isn't complete without a snare drum. And then that will sound like this. Now I'm not really happy with that snare drum, so uh, an easy way to swap this out um, because it is the last module I added, it has number 4 at this moment. I just go ahead and delete it. You now see that uh, this color changes uh, back to white because there's no module attached to it. But if I load in another module... This will be orange again, and if I connect it to the output... That sounds a little bit better. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this pattern for as long as needed. So it will play uh, for the whole song. And now what I want to do, I also want to add a hi-hat, but I'm not going to add it into this pattern here. I'm going to give it its separate pattern. So let's select the hi-hat.
and add that in this uh, pattern. Note that I just slapped these uh, in here a bit randomly. It, right here, they just skip a few beats, and that's fine. That just gives the song a bit of extra swing. So, uh, if you want, of course, you can just keep it very tight exactly on uh, every 1 8 uh, beat, but uh, I, I personally like it if it's broken up a little bit like this. So let's go ahead and also copy this one to play for the whole song. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, I also slightly changed the panning for the snare drum a little bit to the left, and the hi hat a little bit to the right. And uh, that's it, and you could call this song done now. Um, I really would like to add just a little bit more to it, because right now it's a tiny bit dull, so what I'll do is I'll just add in a new pattern here for a new bass line. So I select the bass. And what I'll do is instead of uh, the C I was using here, I'm going down to use the G. So let's see, I've got eight of these. So to make it even, I'll just uh, copy this one over eight times as well. And then I will add in a new a pattern for a new melody. And now I'm not going to use this piano again because that would, uh, well, I, I could, but I want to give this second half of the song something different. I want to have a bit of contrast in the song. So I am going to add a whole new sound for that. So let's see what can I add. Uh, this flute sounds uh, pretty good, so let's add that in and uh, start making a new melody. What I'll do here is uh, I'm going to cut this note 
right here. So after uh, this beat, I will cut this note. And uh, to do that, I place the cursor on this line and I press the back tick or tilde key to enter a note off event in here. Alternatively, I can also use the caps lock key to enter this note off. And I do like that there, but I want it a bit later. And now to simply copy these two over, add in a new pattern. And um, let's just see what that sounds like. Good enough, so uh, now I'll just uh, copy over these, uh, drum, this drum pattern again. And now instead of the hi-hat, and this is why I decided to keep the hi-hat separate, I'm adding in another pattern, and I'm adding in another drum sound. And now we'll go for this uh, timbal. Just like that, very simple. And now the second half it will sound like this. Again, uh, this is not the greatest song ever written and uh, it's uh, not supposed to be. This is just something to practice, something to play with in Sunfox, just to get started. We will get to making our masterpieces in a future episode. For right now, it's important that you understand how Sunfox works, how to 
import modules, how to change modules, and um, just how to get a basic song structure started. So that's it for this uh, first tutorial. Next time I will have a look at uh, creating some uh, different samples ourselves, some different sounds, because while the instruments that are um, included in Sunfox when you download it, they do a good job. They are, of course, not the best uh, sounds to use in your song. They are very basic and there are some ways to get better sounding instruments for your song. And so that is what we will be looking at next time. Um, I will give you some homework though, especially if you are a beginner in Sunfox. And uh, this is your assignment. Write a song. Uh, use this tutorial as a guide, but do not copy exactly what I did, because that's not learning anything, and you're just copying me, and you will be writing the same song I just wrote, and there's no fun in that. So go ahead, write your own song, choose the same samples if you want, choose different ones, uh, make the song longer or shorter, use different key to put the song in, like A minor is also a very simple key to work with. So just make a song. It doesn't have to be great. A minor is uh, pretty bad as well. And then what you do, um, if you want, of course, send that song over to me, uh, to my email address, daedalusyoung at gmail.com. So in order to do that, you go to this... Uh, button here at the top left, which is actually the Sunfox icon. You click on it and you click on save song. And then you get this dialog and here where it says name, you type in the name of your song. For example, best song ever. And click on OK to save it in any directory you want. Then Remember where you saved it and then send it from there to my email address. And if you give me permission, then maybe in a, in a future episode, if I get enough submissions, I will showcase a few of your own creations. Your very first song made in Sunfox. And uh, that's it. That's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, do like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. And let's uh, start making some music in Sunfox and I will see you next time.